Ceva Guego. My name is Chef Tanya Brandt and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to be your workshop lead today and I would like to say hi to everybody, especially to the virtual food summit participants that we will have watching today. Um, that is for the Intertribal Agriculture Council and I'm very happy to make this video for you today. So a little about myself, I am Mohawk or Haga from Six Nations, Ontario, Canada. That's in um, Southern Ontario, about an hour south of Toronto. Um, so today we're gonna talk about Onus Day. So we are gonna lie two types of corn today. So this is our Haudenosaunee sweet black corn and it was grown here on our property. So this property here that I'm actually really happy to film with today because I haven't showed this on my YouTube channel yet. So this is Mohawk Seed Keepers Garden. So this is about a five year passion project of my mother's that she started once um, she retired from teaching. Um, so now it's a, a full fledged garden and about two summers ago we started building this. So this is an earth ship. So it's all made out of all sustainable materials and it's all been done by basically volunteer labor and it's a really a community project that's coming together and one day once it's all done what we're starting now is going to be a um, Haudenosaunee gardening and technical skills house so to me everything in our in our culture really is it goes back to food our technical skills woodworking all these things are related to stuff that we have and we use in our foods so that's why i'm so passionate about this place and working with my mom and um, discussing with her like things we're gonna grow and things that I can use in my own catering because I do own my own catering company that's called Yuego Foods and Yuego in the Mohawk language just means it's delicious so the reason I chose that name was because I was a mom and that's something that's really important to me and the word Yuego is one of the first food words that our babies learn because you're feeding them and you're mmm Yuego, Yuego ga you're asking them if they like it so that was uh, my influence behind choosing that name for my catering company. But today, what we're going to do is I wanna show you the process of nixtamalizing corn. We're going to make cornbread, our traditional Haudenosaunee style cornbread, but I wanted to really go over the nixtamalization process for people to make it more approachable about how to do it at home for yourself. So today, before we start our cornbread, what we're going to do is, what I wanted to show you is the two types of corn we're going to be lying. So one is our traditional white corn. It's called Tuscarora white corn. This was something that was gifted to us once the Tuscarora joined um, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. And you'll see all of our traditional corns have eight rows on them, where a, a healthy line of corn would have eight rows. Sometimes you get, you know, some other little fancy. But this has big um, kernels on it, so it was one of the reasons why we kind of took to this corn, and it's really the one that survived that um, is really prevalent in our communities. So um, a few years ago, my mom started germinating this one and really had to acclimate it to our climate to be able to bring it back. And it took a couple of years to get it to where it looked nice and it was acclimated and then we decided to grow a field of it. So to our knowledge that this was the first time in about 60 years in our community that this Haudenosaunee sweet black corn was grown. And we've just been trying to um, share it as much as we can amongst the Confederacy. There was quite a few people, few people growing it this year, so I'm really happy to see that and really happy that we could be a part of um, passing on that knowledge. So this Haudenosaunee sweet black corn, you'll see a little bit of the difference with our um, white flint corn, is this one is puckered. So that actually, that's what makes it sweet. That's that sugar content in there. So when it dries, it kind of shrivels up. And that's actually an indication that it is a fresh eating corn. So this one can be eaten and it's absolutely beautiful when it's fresh because it actually starts out white and then it turns colors, these purples and blues and uh, actually little dots of yellow throughout it when it's fresh eating. And as far as I know, this is the grandfather variety to the modern days peaches and cream corn that you get in the grocery store. So yeah, that's why this one's puckered, just so if anybody knows it's the, the sugar content that does that to, uh, to corns. So they are two different types of corns, but we are going to nixtamalize them both the same way or lie them. Haudenosaunee people, we say it lied corn, hulled corn, washed corn, but the scientific term is nixtamalization. So you'll hear me kind of use both and reference both. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to sift our um, wood ashes and that's what we're going to do. There's also people that use um, cal or pickling lime is another product that can be bought in grocery stores um, and used to do this process as well. Um, it's a lot easier to find that in um, Places that have larger canning sections in the grocery store or places um, like 
uh, Mexican food grocers, things like that for people because they also mix tamales all of their corn for tamales, tortillas, and all those types of good foods. So what I'm doing here is I'm sifting the ashes because I want to get all these big chunks out. This is just going to float as soon as you put it in the water. It's going to mix with your corn. It's not going to break down and it's going to be like, you don't want to pick that out of your corn. It's not, it's not too much fun. So it's really important to sift your ashes. Make sure you get all those big pieces out. So I'm sifting enough here to do two. So we're going to do one inside and because that's what I want to show you how to get it done with um, just being able to do it at home. Like it's a really simple process. Um, and I think a lot of people are really kind of scared to even attempt to do it at home. And a lot of times when we're taught um, in workshops, it's this um, big ordeal. It's outside, it's in a cauldron and, it, and it's these really large amounts that can be really intimidating for um, a home cook or somebody that wanted to do it first time. So I thought this way we would do two kinds of corn. We'd show you both ways and let you know that it is a really simple process and we really should be able to do that for our families because it's so important um, as Indigenous people that we have our traditional foods and our children are eating them and it's, it's good for our bodies. And so I got most of it out here now. You can see that, it's just all nice and sifted fine. Okay, so here's our uh, mighty little sheller. <laughs> This is, um, we actually have a big one that can even be hooked up to a tractor, but this one here is good for home use. This is the one I use the most because um, lying corn just with catering and stuff, that's what uh, what we use. So it's old, it's trusty, and it works good, and uh, that's all we need it for. So um, all you do is you're sticking the corn in, spin it around, and it takes the cob out, and it shells the corn. So, um, so that was about three spins, and usually I put it in twice if it doesn't get everything. And that's all we do. So, take it in a couple times. Takes about three turns. To the point where the hole is coming off, you rub it, but you just let it. still dry. Mm -hmm. 
All right, right now what we're going to do is we are going to nixtamalize the corn. So outside, you'll see I'm doing it outside over a fire as well. So we, we already got that on and going. So right now we're filming this one here. So we have our ashes that are gonna go into um, our boiling water and our corn that's we're nixtamalizing and that's everything that we need right now. So I have the water on a nice rolling boil right now. And I'm gonna dump our ashes in. Um, you can put the corn in first or the ashes, it really doesn't matter. I actually usually put the corn in first and let it boil for about 10 minutes and then I'll throw the ashes in and mix it up and let it do its thing. Um, when, I'll get that right in there. Let me get it mixing and get it on cooking. And we're gonna mix that up and let it go. And it's almost an immediate reaction when you're doing this. Um, like why do we add the ashes? Why are we doing that? So the outside of each corn kernel is really hard, right? You know, that thick skin. So that's the hull, and this is hulling the corn. So what it's gonna do is the ashes in the water creates an alkaline solution. So that's needed, um, and it eats away at that outside, and it softens it up, and it dissolves that outer hull. So when you hear somebody say, oh, it's hulled corn, that's um, what they're talking about is they'll take this, get the hulls off, and then they'll dry it for long-term storage. So now that we have this in here and you can see that um, it's almost an immediate effect, um, that it's already turning bright orange like a pumpkin. You can see on the little sides of the seeds and that was like 30 seconds, right? So. That's what we want to look for and that's how it lets you know that the um, alkaline solution is working and, in, and it, that reaction is happening. So what it's also doing is adding like a ton of B vitamins and um, niacin to the corn. So this wasn't a process that they took to Europe so that's why you heard about things like pellagra and different illnesses and vitamin deficiencies that happened when um, they took our corns over there but not this nixtamalization process. So this bright orange color will last for about 45 minutes and then you'll see it start to subdue and go away, kind of turn yellow and eventually it just dissolves away. That's when you know the hulls are done, they're pretty much off. You can pick up a piece of corn and rub it and see that hull will come right off. So at that point you can take it and wash it. A lot of people, they'll take it and wash it, boil it again, wash it again. Like they'll do that process three or four times during the cooking period for that. Um, how I do it personally is I'll take it, let it boil for that 45 minutes, and then I'll let it boil for probably about another hour and shut it off and leave it. And if I'm um, lying corn and fully blooming it to make our corn soup or something like a pasoli, like a hominy corn, um, I'll do this at night, turn it off, just leave it setting in there all night, and then in the morning I'll rinse it and um, just rinse it a few times, like rinse it, boil it, um, mostly just to get the ashes and leftover stuff off, rinse it and then boil it again until it gets to the point where I want it to bloom, depending on what the use is that I'm gonna use it for. turned out pretty purple all right so now we had our corn and we had it all um, it's cooked right to a stage where the skins on them when you rub it the skin like it's pretty much dissolved at this point the holes like completely off it's just kind of yucky and dirty at this point um, so I dumped off the rest of the water and if you see I dumped it off outside so you don't really want this going down um, your drains and stuff because it can be corrosive um, to your plumbing so we want to get the corn nice and clean and at that point um, we're done all we have to do is grind the corn so um, yeah this is all done I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the white corn as well one thing I didn't mention earlier um, that I did um, did want to touch on was the pot that you use I did want to mention that you don't you shouldn't use an aluminum pot um, to do this process because it's corrosive and um, it's kind of bad for your health <laughs> so you don't really don't want to do that so stainless steel is basically your best option um, when you're when you're doing this um, or at least that's what I would recommend um, as the best thing to do um, the nixtamalization process for the corn um, so yeah tomorrow we're gonna make some cornbread
there you go it's a new day and we are done our corn so here it all is we rinsed it and nixtamalized it did all that um, a lot of times you don't want to do this all on the same day because it can take quite a few hours to get done <laughs> so we had our hood and our, our this is our hood and shoni sweet black corn that we did and this is the tuscarora white corn that we did and you can see they they puffed up they more than doubled are pretty much doubled in size and um, they aren't fully bloomed all the way like when we make our um, our corn soup though because you can end up taking them and ideally when you break them up um, even if there's a bit of dry still in there that's okay because that's going to help when we grind it up and do like this masa um, part here so this is the corn grinder that I'm going to use today um, I just bought this off of Amazon you can get it I believe the brand is called Victoria um, for this particular model um, so that's the easiest way um, right now if you don't own um, some people use the big industrial corn grinders once this is dry um, but this is pretty much what you're going to use for home use and they're not expensive I think this was um, about thirty dollars so um, that's what we're going to use today traditionally what we would have used is we have our corn pounder down here um, I just have it here um, to show you kind of how traditionally we would have done this and this really, um, just like our corn, our corn pounder comes from the Sky World. Um, a lacrosse player turned into a comet and brought that as one of the gifts to Sky Woman when she came here. So it tells us that we brought this, just like the corn, we brought our, our, um, our methods of um, lying our corn with us. So, um, you know, these are like our first foods, right? Corn, beans, and squash are three things when you mix together, they make a perfect protein. And that perfect protein means we, we didn't have to eat meat. So if we had times where we didn't have meat, we were still healthy and strong so I guess we can get started here <laughs> um, I'll start with the white corn I guess um, they sell these and they sell other ones too that are a little bit higher up and you need a little bit more corn in there but I mean unless you're doing tons it's not necessary okay okay so we're getting this going and you see it's starting to come out now um, what there is inside is two metal plates with like grooves on it. So they go against each other, just like um, like an old stone mill, right? They grind together and they make it nice and flat. And then what you get out of the corn is this nice texture that is nice and fluffy. So this is like fresh masa, right? So these is what, what you could take and make it into tortillas and tamales and different things. But this is what we we do with our cornbread and how ours is different is that we're going to boil it um, to cook it so you can see once you squish it it sticks right together so what happens is, is like this jellification process that happens when we're doing this so that jellification process um, kind of makes it sticky so it sticks together and that's what our binding agent is that's going to keep our cornbread together so so I'm going to do this for a while <laughs> and, and um, we'll come back and form our bread. <laughs> so now we have the white corn all ground up and you can see it's just nice and falls apart it's already trying to um, kind of ball up together on its own um, so if you want a nice white product um, so this is like masa harina right like if you want to make your tortillas that's pretty much what it comes from you can do a finer grind and that's why I have the matate here because you can use it and get nice really really nice fine grind so if you want really nice tortillas that's a way to do it um, this way I made a little bit more like a rustic I guess kind of tortilla but you can see how it stays flat and stays together and really you're just gonna flatten that out and that's what you're gonna um, do on your hot plate there or on a comel um, the other thing is you see because I didn't really have anything good I didn't have a nice wash basket to rinse with you can see the eyes a lot of the eyes are still in the corn um, if you want to remove that you can literally I know some like old duras I'll sit there and literally take out every single one from every piece of corn and um, I'll do that usually but I'll save that for more um, if it's for ceremony or um, a funeral something like that where we're making um, a ceremonial bread all right well I cleaned my workstation up a little bit we're getting ready to move farther along in our recipe making here so what I have here is I reconstituted these last night 
and you'll see they kind of just look like kidney beans right now. But what they are are our Iroquois cornbread beans. So um, my mom grows these here at uh, Mohawk Seed Keepers Garden. So I'm happy and thankful to be able to use them. Um, the actual beans that are the beans that we use for our cornbread. So when I prepared these beans, what I did is you can just see I have it in a pot full of water. So I took the beans, threw water in there, and I just put it on a low simmer for about an hour really, and then till it kind of feels like it's cooked through, and then I'll shut it off, and then I'll just let the beans sit there um, pretty much till it cools right down. And that can give you um, a nice consistency where they're not too mushy, because you can see they're not broken up and stuff. You don't want that because you don't want them to squish when you um, have them in the bread. But um, if that happens, it's no big deal either. It's just, um, just for a nice presentation. So now to make our cornbread, really it's just the two ingredients plus water. So making the cornbread is actually the, the easiest part. So right now, if you had dry um, corn flour that you're working with, you're gonna use some of your hot water that's ready for your cornbread. And you're gonna add it and mix it until it reconstitutes. Um, to a consistency that you can ball it together. And if you put too much in, you can add a little more flour, just sit back and forth. It's really forgiving. I'm gonna put a touch of water in here. Um, my hands are pretty good for hot stuff because I'm a chef, so you might wanna <laughs> use a spoon or something for this part. But you can see I'm just massaging it a bit. I wanna even out that wetness. And then I'll put some beans in. You don't wanna put your beans in right away because you don't wanna break them up. That's gonna be the last thing that you do is throw your beans in there just before you um, start to shape your wheels. Okay. All right, so now you can see this, um, the dough is all coming together. It's kind of, it wants to stick to itself. And that's, uh, once again, because of that jellification process that happens, that kind of makes it sticky and that's our binding agent. So we don't have to add anything to it to make it do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab some of my beans. We don't need too many. So that's probably about enough there, about two handfuls I have here. So I'm just gonna take a bunch and we're just gonna start shaping it, but we're not squishing really hard, just slowly bring it together. It's just like making a giant meatball and then kind of shape it into a wheel shape. And But you might actually, this is a good time to have some cool um, cold water with you. If you are doing it from dry, it's a little bit more needed because you can see what I'm doing is I'm getting nice um, smooth sides. Like you want to have nice smooth edges. Um, because it's going to go into the water, that's going to kind of help seal it. Because this is going to, um, you don't want it to fall apart. Because it, it, it's always a possibility and I guess that's the, it makes you make sure you have a good mindset. <laughs> and then we put it in the water and it's going to boil. Um, and we, they say it's till it dances. That's when we know that our cornbread wheels are done. So, and that's it really, that's all that's to it, is just shaping it and putting it in the water. And what we're gonna do actually with our black corn is we're gonna make some smaller dumplings out of it so we can show you how you can, those can be thrown into a soup and um, they don't even have to be done in water. So now we're putting the, the cornbread into the water. Okay. It's nice and smooth, you don't want any cracked edges because that's where the water's gonna get in. Okay, so our corn's in here now, it's just gonna do its thing. I have it on high because we're gonna bring that up to a nice boil. Um, that's what's going to help penetrate it and get to, like we said, till it's dancing to let you know um, that's when it's finished. But what you're going to see too is your water's going to get a little cloudy because a little bit's going to come off. And at the end of the day, when you're doing it, especially you're doing a lot, that has a lot of nutrients in it. And some of our people will even take that and just drink it like a broth or a tea. And we can even use it um, as a stock in different soups and things like that because it's really nutritious and a lot of times you might not want to waste that. Okay, our, our, um, our cornbread's all done here. You can see it's floating. I don't know if you can see, but it is floating. <laughs> so we boiled it, and like I said, we just till it dances, right? And then it comes up. Um, because we used fresh, um, the fresh corn flour, uh, they cooked really super quick, like not even 15 minutes probably, and they're already floating. So here's our loaf here. I'm just going to set that down. And they are still kind of gentle, so you want to be careful. An odd bean or two might fall off. That's okay. So, yep. Yeah. Um, and then one of the other things that also I'm going to show you is with the black corn. Because we have our black corn here, our black corn ball. So what I wanted to do is show you that um, cornbread, this isn't the only way that we can use our cornbread. So 
I've done this and I actually have a video um, from being down in uh, South Carolina with Chef uh, Dave Smoke McCluskey and we made a smoked turkey um, soup with some uh, sweet grass infused cranberry beans and we used dumplings so we made a turkey dumpling soup and these don't have to be boiled first because these how they, they stay together nicely you can put them right into your soup that you're making and they can just cook in there just like any other flour dumpling um, and there's no beans in this one right so this one's a, a plain cornbread you can see that there's different styles of cornbread we use our uh, mohawk red corn and we'll mix it with strawberries and that's our, our wedding breads and you can sweeten them like with maple syrup or maple sugar and you can top them with anything. You can top them like a dessert with uh, fresh berries or maybe some maple sugar or, um, like I said before, like a gravy and serve it um, and steak and cornbread. So I think that's just about everything that I wanted to show you today. So I'm really happy that you joined me. And I really wanted to thank the um, Intertribal Agriculture Council for um, helping me make this video, making it possible for all of you. And I, I hope wish you a good uh, rest of your virtual intertribal food summit conference that's going on and if you liked what you've seen here you'd be sure to check out more videos that i have um chef tanya brent um, on youtube and i'm always just kind of playing with some of our traditional foods and seeing what we can come up with and just encouraging people to use um our traditional foods and i also want to thank mohawk seed keepers garden and my mom for um, letting us film here today and for giving the ingredients that we use today so now i go uh, Hold on.